Airbot is back at it again, offering next generation technologies in flight controllers and ESCs in a single, compact, and reliable board. Today we're looking at the Knox 2.17 from Airbot.com. The Knox comes in at $99. At first glance, this might seem like a lot of money, but when you look at the next gen features packed into this all-in-one, I think you'll see that your money is well spent. You may have heard of the Asgard from Airbot. Well, they've managed to recreate the Asgard, but this time in a 20 by 20 hole pattern for your smaller micro four inch and super light five inch builds. The flight controller features include a built-in Betaflight OSD, an F4 processor, and an MPU 6000 gyro. One of the cool things is that this gyro is screwed into the top of the flight controller in a vibration isolation box. Because it's not hardwired to the board, it's actually replaceable if you were to damage it, unlike other flight controllers, which would just simply be ruined. It comes with a barometer, if you're into that kind of thing, and a 5 volt back with 500 milliamp LC filter, as well as 4000 UF capacitors on board. The LC filter and capacitors are going to help you get that crystal clear video with no noise that you may have experienced in other builds. Now let's talk about the 4-in-1 ESC built into this board. This 4-in-1 comes with everything you'd expect in a 2018 ESC with all of the bells and whistles. It comes with BL Heli 32, the 32-bit architecture that's becoming the new norm. It can run DSHOT 1200, which is a big step up from what most ESCs were capable of running last year. It's rated at 35 amps per motor. It's got telemetry output functionality, and these ESCs are fully upgradable. I think it's quite incredible that they've managed to squeeze all of that into a single board with a dimensions of 48 by 39 millimeters and a 20 by 20 hole pattern, and the thing only weighs in around 20 grams. Airbot has been working with the drone community over the last few months to iterate on this board and improve it considerably through both hardware and software changes. This is something I've personally been involved with, and I think you can rest assured that you're getting something that is thoroughly tested and approved by the community. Alright, now let's look at how to wire it up. Other than the main pads for power and ground where you're going to run your battery, all of the other pens are on one side of the board in the corner, so it makes it really simple. You're going to hook up your receiver to the three pins on the right using 5V, ground, and RC, which is your S-Bus, and that uses UART too. If you're a Spectrum user, you're going to power your receiver off of the 3 volts instead of the 5 volts, but otherwise it should be identical. You'll power your VTX off the main battery pads, and then you can either power your camera off of your VTX's power output, or off of those main battery ground pads as well. For your video, you want to run that into the leftmost pin labeled VN, and then run your VTX video wire to the second pin over labeled VOUT. That's going to allow you to utilize the Betaflight OSD. Now here's where you have a decision to make. You can either use Smart Audio for your VTX or S-Port Telemetry for your receiver, but not both. There are just not enough UARTs on this board. This is my main complaint on this board, and I really wish they would have allowed for three usable UARTs. Smart Audio is going to allow you to change your VTX settings like power output, channel, and band right from the Betaflight OSD menu, and S-Port Telemetry is going to allow you to tune your PIDs or make flight controller setting changes right on your Tyrannus radio. If you're going with Smart Audio, you can hook up the Smart Audio wire to TX1 on the bottom left. If you decided you wanted to use Smart Port Telemetry, you can hook up the uninverted Smart Port wire to TX1. Alright, with the traditional stack, you would have your 4-in-1 board on the bottom, your flight controller on top, and then your, uh, you know, your, your VTX and receiver kind of smashed in there. Um, so let's take a look at what the same frame looks like with the Knox. Alright, I popped the top off. Let's take a look at how it's just wired up. Um, you can see, I mean, how clean it is. It's just, you have the, uh, the flight controller, uh, the Knox mounted on here, and then we have our power and ground leads on the main terminals. And then branching off of that, and on the bottom of the board, I have everything I need for my VTX. My camera is powered underneath the board as well, and then you have your receiver. All of the connections are on the bottom back side of the board right there. Um, so it's all nice and clean in one spot. All your wires are cut to the same length. And then you basically can just mount your VTX and uh, receiver right on top just like that. One thing to consider is that the USB port is actually on the front of the board. So if you were to mount this like I did with your battery pads in the back here, um, that means the USB port is actually, um, you can see that right underneath the camera on the bottom side of the board. This actually is not something I can get to uh, when I have the top on and the camera pressed down where it goes. Um, so if I were to redo this, I would uh, strongly consider mounting this board sideways. Um, yes, that would mean your main power and ground leads are coming up the side, 
but for a top mounted battery that's actually how a lot of people are running them anyway um, and then that would give you access to uh, the USB port on the side and I personally uh, when I'm doing a build and constantly throwing back throwing it back in beta flight and tuning it and just kind of changing settings and seeing what works so for me to have to keep pulling up the uh, the camera to get to the USB and it's kind of a pain. I'm not going to bother showing you flight video of this 4 inch build because I found that it flies just as silky smooth as all of the other Omnibus F4 videos I've posted in the past. To be honest, with the latest version of Betaflight with filters removed, when paired with this F4 processor and soft mounted gyro the way it is, B Shot 1200 and 8K 8K CPU and PID cycle, you end up with an incredibly silky smooth flight that Race Flight can't even compete with. I believe Nurk FPV has been using these omnibus boards on his chase cam rigs, and you know he wouldn't be using them if they didn't offer the peak performance that he requires. To recap, I think if you're someone looking to build a slammed lightweight 4 inch or 5 inch build with a 20x20 20 20 hole pattern, and you want to reduce the amount of soldering and wiring as much as possible while still being able to get some of the more advanced features like smart audio, I think the Nox is a good fit for you. Be sure to make sure it fits inside of the standoffs or frame canopy you plan to use as it is quite large outside of the mounting holes. I hope this video helped you. If it did, please throw me a thumbs up so I know. If you have questions or comments, please leave them below. I try to respond to everything. And if you enjoy product reviews and how to's on drone related topics, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. I'm